excited about. For those of you who follow me on Twitter, you might wonder how I became such a strong supporter of India and Hindus. Uh, well, they say a picture's worth a thousand words, so here's a picture. <laughs> you may be wondering why the young lady on the left looks so sad. <laughs> it's because she's about to marry that big hairy guy on the right. That's me. <laughs> Her name is Radha Bardwaj. She was born and raised in Chennai, where we were married. And she's gone on to become an award-winning filmmaker who has worked with the likes of Sir Derek Jacobi, Alan Rickman, Christian Slater, Philip Glass, and Oscar winners like Jared Leto, Ron Howard, and Ingo Ishioka. And I have gone on to become a Twitter troll so we each achieve in our own way. So I've learned a thing or two about India and Hindus from having married into the culture. Radha is very proud of her culture. And working in the film industry, she's become sick and tired of the consistently negative portrayals of Hinduism in Western popular culture. And even more sadly, in Indian popular culture. We all know the examples from the West. Slumdog Millionaire portrayed Hindus as violent oppressors. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom depicted Hindus as members of some diabolical cult. On the recent CNN series, Believer, Reza Aslan represented Hindus as brain-eating cannibals. I find that one particularly ironic because one of the first influences that Hinduism had on me through Radha was that I became a vegetarian. Now we do. So not only do I not eat human brains, but I do not eat the brains or flesh of any living creature. My wife's Hinduism didn't teach me to be a cannibal. It taught me to be compassionate. And then, and then we had that recent episode of Quantico that portrayed Hindus as terrorists. I'd like to know, who makes up the rules of political correctness, and why are those rules never used to protect Hindus? <laughs> Even in the West, where Hindus are an immigrant minority, political correctness never protects Hindus. And sadly, this hostility to Hindus has long been reflected in the popular culture of India itself. And I could give plenty of examples, but I won't, because I'm not entirely sure who's in our distinguished audience today. <laughs> but just check my Twitter. But why would Indian popular culture be hostile to its own indigenous civilization. Perhaps it's because Indian popular culture is partly funded by non-Indians who don't have India's best interests at heart. <laughs> or maybe it's a holdover from colonialism where imperialists sought to maintain control by trying to teach Hindus to be ashamed of their culture. And maybe some Indian elites, I won't name names, but maybe some Indian elites still have not decolonized their own minds, and so they crave the approval of Western elites and try to mimic them. And maybe colonial divide and rule tactics have survived to this day in the form of vote bank politics. Well, Radha is determined to do something about it. And a couple of years ago, she got a burst of inspiration. On September 24th, 2014, India became the first nation to send a spacecraft into the orbit of Mars on the very first try. 
India achieved this feat more economically than any nation had before, spending less than the budget for the Hollywood space movie, Gravity. That's right, the mission cost less than the movie. The achievement of the Indian scientists and engineers was, as they say, a giant leap for mankind and womankind, because many of the engineers who played key roles were women. Next slide, please. This iconic photo of employees of the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, celebrating the success of the Mars mission went viral. With ISRO's cooperation, Radha got to know many of the women engineers who made the Mars mission possible. And Radha found that they were just like the women she grew up with, her cousins, her aunties, her nieces. Some practiced yoga, some meditated, they performed pujas, they celebrated the festivals, but most importantly, they all knew that their space age achievements were rooted in their ancient culture. They were keenly aware that they were heirs to a lineage that dated back millennia to brilliant pioneering astronomers like Aryabhata. After speaking with these remarkable women, Radha knew that she had to tell their story. And she's in India right now making a feature film that tells their story. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to announce the upcoming film, Space Moms. Space Moms is a dramatization of the Mars mission through the eyes of women engineers. Now Moms, which we have in caps, is a play on words. The mission was called the Mars Orbiter Mission, M-O-M. But many of these women were indeed moms just normal, middle-class Indian women raising their families, helping their kids with their homework, caring for their parents, and whose day job just happened to be a mission of great importance to their country. This is, this is the story of women who are at the same time ordinary and extraordinary. You know, working women around the world who have to balance family with challenging careers are space moms in their own way. Just look around this room today, look around this conference, and see all the space moms that this culture has produced. Doctors, lawyers, scientists, engineers, entrepreneurs, executives, CEOs. It's so impressive. People ask us, Will this film be like Hidden Figures? Hidden Figures, as you may know, was a hit film about African-American women mathematicians who worked behind the scenes in the US space program. But this film will not be like Hidden Figures because in Hidden Figures, the women had to struggle against the majority culture. In Space Moms, the women are supported by the majority culture, the culture that made them who they are. A culture that reveres women, a culture that worships knowledge, a culture that encourages women to achieve. Space Moms will introduce the world to Indian women who are relatable, likable, and highly accomplished, and will show how these women are the products of their culture. These women are truly India's daughters. And by simply showing that, Space Moms will fight back against the narrative from both the West and the East, that all Indian women are helpless victims. It will fight back against those Bollywood movies where as soon as someone walks on screen wearing saffron, you know he's the villain. <laughs> Space Moms, by contrast, does not villainize anyone. And it's not just a film about Hindus. It's a film that showcases and celebrates the beautiful diversity of a country founded on a culture of pluralism and acceptance. So people of all backgrounds will cheer as the underdog space moms race against the clock 
to achieve the impossible, fighting through all sorts of suspenseful twists and turns along the way. Space moms will make Indians of all communities, all faiths, all castes feel proud of their country. And around the world, people of all nationalities, not just Indians, will be inspired by these Indian space moms and will gain a new respect for the country and the culture that produced them. And particularly for the kids, especially the girls, that inspiration will help many of them muster the confidence to study science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Think of all the young Indians, both in India and the diaspora, who may have been influenced by all that negativity they've absorbed from the media. Space moms will help them realize that their Indic culture is something to embrace and feel proud of. You know, if a film called Crazy Rich Asians can become a, a landmark cultural event, why not a film about crazy smart Indians? <laughs> Millions of people around the world are starving for a positive movie like Space Moms. And that's why our film will be so successful in India and around the world, even though it's not a superhero action movie. It may not be a superhero action movie, but remember, not all heroes wear capes. Some heroes wear saris. <laughs>